We'll continue working with the Burton and King article about the health benefits of writing, the Hearst, Baranek, and Daniel article about the sources of stress, and the O'Hare and Cher article about drinking. Examples. Before we move on to other parts of the article, we need to consider what we know from the information about the sample. The technical way to say it is that we want to consider limitations to generalizability. That might sound complicated, but the actual idea is probably familiar. Have you ever heard the phrase, sounds like, sounds like comparing apples to oranges? Generalizability asks if we're trying to take data from apples to draw conclusions about oranges, or vice versa. The group we obtain data from is the sample, and the group we're drawing conclusions about is the population. So generalizability asks, does the sample accurately represent the population it was intended to represent? In some cases, it can be as easy as knowing the apple does not represent the population of chocolate candies. In other cases, though, it can be more tricky. We might have to think more about the intended population and the way the research was carried out. Would a bag of peanut butter M&Ms allow us to draw conclusions about all candies with chocolate and peanut flavors? Conclusions like this one are the reasons we discourage the worst use of the word prove in APA style writing in favor of using terms like support, suggest, or indicate. That said, we're interested in whether the sampling method and resulting sample would lead to results that seem to represent the entire population. It helps to remember, too, what the authors are interested in. So looking across the information we already have in the worksheet, we know Burton and King were interested in how writing about intensely positive experiences impacted mood and health and appeared to be considering people in general. They used a convenient sample of 90 students who used the Student Health Center for health care. The relatively young age of, of the sample might lead us to question whether the findings would represent older individuals. It's helpful to make a note about generalizability, so you have a quick reference later. You could include something like I have in this slide. The information about generalizing from the sample to the population doesn't apply to the Hearst article because it was a content analysis, but we can think about whether the process they used for identifying the articles for analysis would allow them to identify the majority of the articles on the topic without having unrelated information. Now, pause the recording to look at O'Hare and Share. Complete the generalizability section of the worksheet before moving on. There are a few things that might have stuck out for you. We could question whether students from one school would represent other schools, particularly given the large portion that was middle class. Having a relatively low portion of women might also make, he make us hesitant about the results related to gender and substance use. Here's an example of what your notes in this section might look like. The idea about generalizability is not that we would completely discount findings if we're not sure they represent the population. It just leads us to use disclaimers of sorts, words like support, suggest, indicates, instead of proves or directly causes. The concept of generalizability also brings together several things we've learned about so far and encourages us to think about the goals and the population of interest and how that's reflected in the sample.